Good evening again, and uh, very very welcome by at uh, our meditation. Um, we're still busy with some of the idols in our lives that is causing us not to come into a place of intimacy with the Lord. And also, at the same time, look at what are some of these pillars that is identified as well in the larger church of the body of body of Christ. Now, the next idol that I want to kind of deal with this evening is the idol of me, myself, and I, or if you want to give another name to it, uh, basically pride. In Luke 14, 27, Jesus makes a very clear statement. And he says, and whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. One of our greatest challenges that we face for intimacy with God is our own uncrucified egos, where it is all about the me, myself, and, and I that is within us. And what Jesus is saying here, that without the denying of the self in me and in you, there cannot be any true discipleship as is also presented in the scripture in Luke 14, 27, that I've shared with you. If we look at the larger church, we see the church in this time presenting itself in an untamed and undenied ego, strutting around like peacocks, riding on a wave of honor and praise from an admiring crowd, which simply steals and takes the glory away from God, because it's all about my church, our church, our pastor, our worship team, uh, our buildings. The problem is that in today there's so much obsession with individual, individualism, uh, my rights. There's a democratic political climate that is giving direction to our politicians and they respond to the latest opinion poll and we see that the church today is living in a Greek dualistic mindset that has created within the church a culture of long-winded and opinionated statements that is being released constantly in an environment of nothing else but verbal diarrhea. There's a non-stop blabbering and droning of egotistic egos infatuated with themselves. It is scary when you go onto social media and I've done this a couple of times when I was preparing what I want to share with you tonight. And sometimes I can listen at these preachers talking and they can speak for 20 minutes or an hour even. And they say nothing that cannot be said in two minutes. And it's all about me, myself and I. Furthermore, we see a lot of competition amongst believers. Um, measuring themselves constantly of what they are doing in the kingdom of God against one another. We find different churches, especially in this time, running different relief uh, actions, but no one will work together because it's, it's my ministry and that is your ministry, but we are saying the same area, but there's an inability to work together we even fight amongst ourselves. And that is such a sad, sad thing because we allow that pride separates us while God has called us to be one, one as the body of Christ. 
we constantly see this competition who's got the nicest car who's who's got the the best building who's got the best worship team whose lighting is the best whose seats are the best whose parking are the best whose toilets are the best and they measuring themselves against one another the sad thing is that in this process of trying to establish the the me myself and i we forget that the only measurement is Christ because Christ is the standard against we as individuals and as a corporate body must continuously measure ourselves if you have a desire to be intimate with the lord jesus i can tell you now that one of the requirements and demands that jesus is placing upon us is that you need to come to the place where you deny yourself you die to yourself and you surrender your wants and yourself wholly unto the lord if you want intimacy and if you de desire intimacy with god you need to come naked unashamed withholding nothing in humility because the scripture is clear it says he is close to those who are broken hearted he is close to those of a contrite spirit you cannot enter into a dimension of intimacy with god if you are still running on the me myself and i another aspect that has become an idol not in our own lives but also in that of the greater church is the labels that we put the names that we use and even denomination denominationalism in first corinthians i want to share with you some scriptures but before i do that i want to say to you these labels these these names these all fight amongst denominations represents nothing more than a corporate religious ego system where our pride causes us to behave as if christ is divided in the scripture that i referenced to you 1 corinthians 1 verse 12 and 13 it says to you to us that now i say this that each of you says i am of paul and i am of apollos or i am of cephas or i am of christ is christ divided was paul crucified for you or were you baptized in the name of paul All of this is nothing more than an obsession with our own paneled houses as seen in the book of Haggai. It has become a homemade religion crafted out of selected doctrines that suits us. Random experiences filled with biographic ingredients. It has become our marketing tool we have become proud of our own logos and corporate design. We are more dedicated to the founding fathers and the tradition of men than to that of God. His kingship and even the demonstration of the culture of the kingdom of God within our homes, within our lives, and within our churches. I believe that this COVID-19 crisis is for the church at large, the true church of God, a wake up call to return to God and to turn away from our self-made denominations and cultures that has got nothing to do with the God pattern that Jesus has established for his bride. Let me ask you a question today. If you are a pastor, watching this uh, meditation, I want to ask you this question. Do you know your sheep? Do you have the smell 
of sheep on your hands. And to the sheep, I want to ask the question, do you know your shepherd? Do you share your life with him? This is something that we need to seriously consider and think upon. Because if you are a pastor and you're a leader and you don't know those that God has placed in your care and you don't have the smell of your sheep on your hands, the Bible calls you a wicked shepherd. The next idol that we need to deal with has much to do with the message that we preach and the message that we carry because the church has digressed to a place and even we as believers where we've been trained in evangelism to present a sugar-coated gospel to those that we minister to If we look at the culture in which we are living today, you will agree with me that there are many people that are overdosing and they're actually addicted to insane amounts of sugar that can produce cancer or diabetes. In a similar way, we see that the false and very much idolized gospel of cheap and a quick salvation without obedience that promises salvation and healing and deliverance without the call for true repentance and alignment to kingdom order is what's happening. We find that this gospel that is sugar-coated urges people to come to Jesus without the second step, telling them that they have to come and remain in Christ. I, I want to encourage you that after watching this, this meditation, that you take some time and just read through the, the book of John, the Gospel of John, chapters 14 up until verse 17. And you will realize that as you see what is presented there, that this sugar-coated gospel are producing Christians that are outside of Christ. We see them, they are, they are being blinded by quick results that makes them look good. Some evangelists of this sugar-coated gospel get so excited. Um, they report the number of decisions that they that they have had and the sad thing is they become like these playboys in a disco looking for another spiritual one night stand and in the process they are begetting children that are left as orphans again the sad thing is and the result of this conduct and behavior of the church is that we see many believers wrongly begin to evangelize. These evangelists, these televangelists, because of the large number of followers that they are producing. They publicize the number of decisions that was made at their meetings. They use these numbers to raise money for the next event. The sad thing is that this false gospel is defying and replacing the true gospel of the kingdom of God. It is the genetically altered religious seed that produces an idolatrous superficial Christianity that tastes like sugar, but cannot bring the believer into his position as a mature son of God. That is why we find that we have created a church that is weak, that is passive. We've created a church that cannot face trials and tribulations because we've created a church with an escapism mentality. We're waiting to, be, to fly away somewhere. 
because we've not been taught and trained as believers to have dominion and to rule in the midst of our enemies. If you study the book of Galatians, you will see that the Apostle Paul himself cursed this practice. If he said, you can go and read it in Galatians 1 verse 6 to 9. He says, anyone preaching another gospel than the gospel of the kingdom that he preached shall be eternally condemned. Let's just read that scripture, Galatians 1, 6 9, to 9. He says, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than that what we've preached to you, let him be accursed, as we have said before. So now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you've received, let him be accursed. And this is another reason why we are, as the church, fail to walk in intimacy with the Lord. God bless you as you meditate upon this. As we really meditate upon these idols, let us then also come to the table of the Lord and uh, let's just pray. Father, we as the church come before you as the corporate body of Christ and we want to repent for our pride, for our institutionalization of the church. And Lord, we pray that you will bring us to a place of where we will live our lives in brokenness, in humility, and that we will treat your church, your body, with the same love and the same humility, the same contriteness as what you are doing. We bless you, we worship you, and we pray, Lord, have mercy upon us, your church, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. And may the Lord continue to grow you and develop you into that place and that dimension of intimacy that he also desires to have with you. Good evening and have a good one. God bless.